And I'm Jeanette Bradley, your host of the podcast, What is the Ass? Coming to you from Tampa, Florida, where I explore issues with friends that are important to Black people in America. Before we get to the 24, uh, 2024 presidential election, which will take place Tuesday, November 5th, 2024. As a group of five friends from Tampa and Atlanta, we meet every week to talk about issues many of us are not paying attention to that might impact a Black agenda in this turbulent and uncertain time. Our panel tonight is Celeste Mona Judge here in Tampa with me and Albert Fields and Alton Drew in Atlanta. With 51 weeks left before we go to cast our ballots in the presidential election, our first of the first of our four topics tonight will be to try to answer if we or you are better off than you were four years ago. And if there is a difference between we as Americans versus individuals, we'll attempt to compare the Trump and Biden administration in key areas. Biden says we are better off, but that's not what we're hearing on the streets. I bring your attention to this chart by uh, factcheck.org. Uh, Alton, um, I know you've seen the chart. Judging from the numbers, are we better off as a nation? Are we better off as individuals? I'm confused. Which is it? You're talking about the economic data? Economic data, yes. Oh, yeah. Um I believe America is better off um, on an individual basis. Um, what I see going on in the markets, especially um, the media, well, first of all, the financials, the financial media, you have to be wary of, but the bigger headlines they've been reporting on are plausible. In other words, when you've got 60% of Americans living paycheck to paycheck, you're not doing good. Now, I take that number with a little grain of salt because you could have Americans living paycheck to paycheck but sitting on about $650,000 worth of assets. So, yeah, you may run out of wages, but you've got assets. So really, what, but what it really boils down to is, and I believe that should be the first question in any political discussion is, where do we stand regarding capital? So, but, and when it comes to the election, again, we're 51 weeks out. Um, one, are Americans doing well individually? My answer is no. How will this impact Joe Biden next year? Well, people, you got a Federal Reserve that wants to drive down the inflation rate. However, when I look at inflation, it, it's a two-edged sword. Yes, prices may be falling, but is demand for services falling as well? And if demand for services is also falling, then you've got a problem. Then you don't need workers, and then more ink, and then our more output starts to drop off, and that will not bode well for Joe Biden in the middle of 2024 when he's trying to fight two wars in the Middle East. So, are Americans doing well? My short answer is no. When you take all of that into consideration, a few of us are. You know, one percent of any group in this country is doing quite well. But in, in, overall, in general, no. And I don't think we've seen the um, implosion that's been um, forecasted now for the past couple of years. Right. But me as an individual who can't seem to feel all of this economic boom, if you will, mm -hmm. that Joe Biden talks about and um, what is it, the Bidenomics and um, what... Why is that? Why am I not experiencing what it seems yeah. that people at the top are experiencing and talking about? Right, right. Is I, it I, is it inflation versus my paycheck? Is one not keeping up with the other? Because even as I look at the data mm -hmm. in terms of real income um, during the Trump administration, because that, that that's one of the things that I really want people to kind of feel and understand under Trump. Um, what was real income versus under Biden? Mm -hmm. And um, how does inflation impact that? And yeah. it, it, do we need to have a better understanding? Because you're right, we got to go to the polls. Mm -hmm. And it feels yeah, like well, we don't understand. 
Yeah, well, first and a quick plug. One, I'd recommend people visit altondrewtrades.blog because I talk about this stuff almost every other day. Yeah. Um, in, in order to, the short What's answer. What's the blog again? Yes. altondrewtrades.blog. And, um, mm -hmm. and, but, but the, the short answer is, if you have assets, and this is kind of extreme, but it gives it gives you a, a sense. If you have assets that pay you residual income, then you are doing well. If you are if you have real estate that's paying you rent, and you're able to cover that mortgage on that um, on that property as well as put some of that money in your pocket. If you have securities, bonds, maybe some equity that's paying you dividends or coupons. Mm -hmm. and, you've, and you've got assets, you are doing well. The definition of wealth, my definition of wealth in this country is bondage. What do I mean by that? You, you, say, that, you say that all the time. The yes, I, okay, well, and I'm going to keep saying it because people out there are not thinking on that philosophical level, and that's where you got to be. The short, the short of it is, if you, if you, un, if you, if you are not holding some type of security, some anchor in somebody else's ability to make an income, then you don't have any wealth. We can fool ourselves out there. Oh, I bought a nice house. I bought a car, blah, blah, blah. You are in debt until that credit turns into an asset. And that's, that's, that's where we are. Um, again, I'm not disparaging consumption because if you don't consume, then, then, then there's no yield. There's no profit. Then, then those who hold securities aren't getting paid. But to understand what's happening, we need to understand that the credit card that we have is, 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 is always caps out. And if you don't have an asset to balance that off, and I would argue if you don't have assets two, three times that credit and generating income for you, you're in a hot mess until you hit 62 or 70, whatever, and social security may kick in. I don't mean to be um, too cryptic, but that's that is that is the reality out there when it's it comes to wealth. Seven, by the way, it's it's sixty seven. But you're right. Mm -hmm. So if if under um, let's real weekly earnings, and tell me if this even matters or not. Under mm -hmm. Trump was plus eight point seven percent, but under Biden, if I compare it, is a negative three point nine percent. Yeah. N to to be honest with your guests, with your viewers, I would I would not take the okay, the numbers are real, but as to whether or not Obama, Trump, or Biden actually has that kind of influence over the economy where they can get credit or be turned into the villain, I tell people eh, it's it's just luck of the draw. Where you have to look at. You have to look at not the markets, financial markets are not the economy. You have to look at the banking system. You have to look at the money supply. You have to look at the decisions going into whether or not we raise rates on the federal funds. Um, it, are the bond markets, how, for example, the, uh, the, the government issued bonds. Um, they had a bond issuance last week. Um, not too many of the big players bought up those bonds, although they got rid of them. Not too many of the big players bought those bonds. You've had volatility in interest rates, which impacts the value of your assets. That's where you need to look. Then you look at the politics. Well, are, are, are these guys uh, issuing regulations that, that impact how people trade? Are these guys issuing regulations or are they asking, um, are they issuing bonds that are going to pay for all this brand new spending? The more bonds out there, the greater the supply, the prices fall, interest rates go up. Those are the, those are the factors that people have to look at and then looking at their own portfolios to determine how well they're doing. Then you look at Trump, Biden, you know, they don't have any control over the economy as people think. They have some influence, but they don't have the control. That, yep. That's what, that, that's what I would tell people. Um, but how am I, average Joe, living paycheck to paycheck? Mm -hmm. How am I? How, how can I make sense of this, mm -hmm. um, so that when I go to the polls, 
I understand they don't have any control over it anyway. So um, I'm going to vote on other issues other than the fact that bread is, you know, too high or eggs are too high or whatever. And inflation is really high and I can't buy a house right now. And those are the things that I think voters will be paying attention to. Right. Yeah, they're going to be paying attention to the to the what you call the kitchen table issues. Right, and you're um, saying Biden really can't do too much about it. No, his his job, his job, his job, Trump's job, Obama's job, George Washington's job is to put out a narrative out there that says, "Hey, I'm going to take care of you. I know that you don't know how I'm supposed to do it, and I know that you don't know how I'm supposed to do it, but I'm going to take care of you." And then they keep their fingers crossed and they put out messaging that makes it look like they're doing something. For example, under the Employment Act of uh, 19, the Humphrey Hawkins Act of 1978, they're supposed to coordinate with the Federal Reserve and the Congress to, to um, come up with programs that, meets, that meet certain specific economic goals of the president. And the president puts out this economic report once a year. I don't know what, I forgot what time of the year he puts it out. But uh, Cecilia Rouse, head of the Council on Economic Advisors, she leads on writing that report. And they put that report out. So for so if you want to see what the president is doing, you can look at that report and then try to connect his narrative and his rhetoric with what's going on out there with the numbers. And if you want to vote that way, then, you know, fine. How I look at that is, and then I'll shut up, is there's a law out there that says he's supposed to be doing X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. And so far, every president has done that minimum. Every one of them put that report out. Every one of them put those goals in there. Um, how they coordinate with the Federal Reserve? The Federal Reserve, uh, Jerome Powell will tell you in a heartbeat, we are not a political agency, so we don't comment on fiscal policy. They're supposed to coordinate. But the, the, the extent of the relationship, the extent of the communication, I don't know. And right now, the, the market doesn't even look at that. They're just looking at what the central bank is doing. They're just looking at, at what the financial markets are doing. They look at the consumer, and they want the consumer to do well because if the consumer isn't spending, everything else shot to hell. But when it comes to the, when it comes to the political actors, their job is not to manage an economy. They already kicked that can down the road years ago. I'd say they got rid of that, that responsibility anywhere between 80 and 100 years ago. Their job is to make you feel like they are in control to the point where they're going to do good things for you. And if, for example, and I'll shut up, Bill Clinton had the internet. Bill Clinton ran a surplus. Bill Clinton got lucky because he was told by James Carville back in 1994 Stay to... Hard. Keep the, the, it's the economy, but keep the, specifically, keep the bond markets happy. Got it. That's what he did. And he just rolled it out, you know. And that's why he is probably, in my opinion, I mean, being very objective, he's probably up there in the top four or five of presidents all time. Because he's smart enough to know it's about the bond market. I can't do anything else. And from my memory, I never heard Bill Clinton boast about giving you a great economy and I'm good for it. So. Well, if these presidents can't do anything and people are voting on emotions, mm -hmm. um, because we are, um, I, I just passed the um, gas station um, coming home today and I saw gas at two ninety nine. just right. earlier in the summer. I mm -hmm. was almost at five something for gas yeah. groceries my insurance for my car has doubled mm. homeowners property it, it falls in Biden's lap and all we know is four years ago we were doing well mm -hmm. under Trump now are you saying it doesn't he had nothing to do with it because that is what he said. He's saying we wasn't suffering and the people wasn't suffering. We are suffering now. People are catching hell. Mm -hmm. But four years, ago, four years ago, I'm sorry to interrupt, but four years ago, we were in a pandemic and the world shut down. 
I, I'm knew talking about they were dumping all that money into um, our pockets, if you will, and taking it that we were going to have to pay the piper down the line. Some people knew that. Mm -hmm. Other people just saw Trump's signature on it and thought, wow, he's the best president ever. And not really realizing that actually mm -hmm. we're going to pay for this. We're right. going to pay for this in inflation and a potential recession. Now, that would be the, and that would be the qualifier I put in there is that, that, um, again, when, if, if I got to appease the people, cause the only government has to validate itself by, by giving the, the public a little something, something. So you have to look at, well, okay, if you promise me two trillion dollars in, 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 in goodie bag, where's that going to come from? It's going to come from the bond markets. The government, Janet Yellen is going to write, uh, is going to, is going to issue IOUs, bonds, and maybe the Fed or these commercial banks are going to buy them and give the government cash. And then the government's going to turn around and either give you cash or fund these agencies that eventually turn around and give you all these services. So to Jeanette's point, yeah, we saw, we saw the goodie bag flowing, but we didn't realize that, whoa, you know, these, these bonds, they're going to, they're going to mature. Are they going to roll them over at higher rates? And then we're out here doing all this spending. We're driving up prices ourselves. And the market looks at it and say, oh, well, these people are spending like, you know, sailors. We can jack up the rates on credit cards. And that's but what the market saw, can respond. Who saw the goodie bag? The average person. Might have got a stimulus check. I think I got mm -hmm. two. Mm -hmm. And I've paid for that 10 times over. Okay. I'd rather give them like that because I've paid for that 10 times over. And, and quite frankly, I, every time I get a bill, I, I'm, I'm really just. Mm -hmm. And that's well, right. Look, I, I look, look at it from this. Look at it from this standpoint. Very expensive. You're right. Getting those checks was very, very expensive. expensive. It I happened. knew I knew something was wrong the first year I filed my taxes, and they took all that money back plus more. <laughs> that was the first thing I noticed about that so-called gift. So I never yeah. was happy about it. I right. also have two other points. Usually, the president they say if they if they want to if they want to make you feel better, they go somewhere and start a war, so that you'll have to spend money or the country will spend money, or You'll, you'll look up and the Federal Reserve will come in and keep monkeying and moving the interest rates up and down depending upon what they want to do. And I laugh because we talk about it being such a free market when both those are controlling factors in a market, not right. free. You don't, you don't just go out here and let the market decide. That's the right. feds choose how they want the market to go. That's the right. president. It's right. just like, okay, my, my one conspiracy theory I had about uh, Trump was this. The year that COVID was starting to hit and people were starting to hit and get sick, I think he held back the information until after the Super Bowl. Because had he told everybody before the Super Bowl, then there would have been a big dip in the economy and he would have been blamed for that big dip. The NFL would have blamed him because a lot of people would have stayed at home. And so he held that information back based upon what his people told him to do. So whereas they don't have a control of the market, they have control of the information. Right. And if you control the information, you can dictate emotionally, as Mona has already pointed out, how people feel about the market. You know, they'll tell you it's going good. And if you say it enough times, you got people around you saying it's going good. And the only thing I know is going good is my money going out of my pocket. I don't have the same amount of money coming in my pocket that I had before. You know, yeah. people now are starting to say, well, I don't know if I can use your service or, or maybe if you drop your pricing, I can deal with you a little bit better. So I'm having to cut prices on one end to get some business, to get quote unquote a little business and then turn around and go to the store and my favorite cookies that I used to pay 350 for now cost five and a quarter. Mm -hmm. so I'm, and I'm mad about that. If not, then why? Yeah. But why are your favorite cookies costing more? That's well, that's, that's what I said. Greed. See, because Alton actually talked about it in, in the sense of he's very technical. I'm going to talk about it from a different angle. The okay. rich boys know how to get rich. And so they do things to keep themselves making money. 
just like they change how they got paid off their um, when you get when you get bonds and when you get stock and bonds, even when a company is failing, they wrote in contracts where the top people still could walk away with millions and billions of dollars. What happened? Here, yeah, here's the latest trick. You go to the store and if you look close, that same ketchup bottle that you used to pay three and four dollars for is still three and four dollars, except for the bottle now is ten to fifteen percent smaller. Yes, smaller. It's smaller. You know, we used, to, yeah. we used to love this. We used to love this salad dressing uh, that we would go to this one restaurant. And we went in there, and that was the best salad dressing. We'd ask them for extra and all that. Now they're watering it down. Mm. Okay? So that gives you a chance to, to send more of it out. Mm -hmm. But it is less in reality because you're not you're not using the same quality and the same consistency that mm -hmm. you did. So those are kind of the markers that I look at in terms of when I look around this market, uh, and Mona's talking about gas was almost five. He gas. The, the, the governor of Georgia got rid of the taxes for a while to make it look like we were enjoying ourselves. We had gas down as low as 260, uh, 265 about two weeks ago, you know, and all mm -hmm. he had to do was just take away the taxes and people went like, man, this is a great economy we're living in. So, mm -hmm. This this free economy is mythical, and mm -hmm. it is controlled to control you, and in fact, control you to the point where now they can go up as high as they want to, and you ain't gonna stop spending because now you're a junkie tied to that that mm -hmm. credit card and everything else that's gonna allow you to maintain the style of life that mm -hmm. you're living. Mm -hmm. So I say we're doing worse based upon all that that I said is to say we're doing worse because we're being. We're, we we got this cloth over our eyes, and, and somebody walks by and says, what does that smell like to you? <laughs> okay? <laughs> and you go, hmm, I'm not sure, but it must be good because you keep bringing it by me. Okay? Mm. And that's the problem we got right now. We don't know. We don't know what's going on with the market because we don't. We never train about how to do bonds. We never train to understand the value of them, and we don't understand the concept of how to control that process. Yeah, that, that is correct. That is correct. But yeah. you go ahead. So when I saw the um, the numbers here, I didn't even I, I looked at it and I'm like, I don't care what this data says, how we're supposed to be doing good under Biden. Am I supposed to believe my lying eyes of this? And this is what the people are saying, because it ain't feeling like that. If it's doing good, it isn't trickling down to the people. And yeah, said, people like that. That's why I wanted to sort of pose the question: Are we, as a society, a country, doing better? But on an individual level, that's not translating because when we compare ourselves post-pandemic to other countries, ah, oh, man, we're doing much better. Um, What's that song but, that says? The rich keep getting richer while the poor keep getting poor. Well, that's you know, true. And that's that the song we all say. But that, yes. gets to your point. that gets to your point of the whole greed thing. Um, yes, the inflation. Yes, after the pandemic, um, uh, prices went up and, and things shut down and a war started over here. And now we've got this, this inflation problem here and wages aren't keeping up. Yes, those things are happening, but are we paying it? Are, are we trying to, sort through what is going on. Why am I feeling like I'm not? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, I know why I'm feeling like so, I'm not. Because so, so I'm not. The individual, <laughs> and then there's, yeah, but there's the individual, and, and, the, and, and the data pretty much says that. On an individual level, under Trump, um, weekly earnings were, were, were great. Inflation was lower. But mm -hmm. under Biden, not, not the case. But everything else is looking pretty darn good, just like he's saying. But nobody's connecting to that. We don't see, care see, about I wanna, Jeanette, I want to correct you on one point. You said right. well, a war starting over there as if it just haphazardly started. That war was generated from some military people who need to get rid of some bombs. And they need to get rid of some weapons. The first war, Ukraine, was generated from America when they went over there and began to encourage um, Ukraine to come into NATO. And they had already moved the chess pieces. They knew that Putin wasn't going to put up with that.
right. they felt like Putin had already fought a war and was weak enough that what could happen is he could get to fighting with these guys and then be so weak that America would walk in and take over that country too. So right. all of these wars, even even the war in Israel, if right. you can call that a war, you know, that's just like somebody with a slingshot and fight the guy with two bazookas. And yeah, you can't they, 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 they got a war going. There ain't no war. This is yeah. practice. This, this is like, I know at the beginning of every football season, Georgia finds or some of these other teams find these little Rudy Poot teams. They bring them in, beat them 40, 50, 60, 70, nothing, nothing so they can get their ego on. And that helps them get on through the rest of the season. That's all this war is, quote unquote, in Israel right now. Because they know they're not fighting against anybody who can handle Palestine. They ain't got no airplanes and no jets and no bombs that can do the same things that Israel has. So it's like it's like a crapshoot right now with that. But that's a side issue because the question is, why is that war going on? You see, so that America can spend that money and get those bond prices going. And everybody at the top is going to make out and be wealthy where the rest of us, they're going to say, come on, guys, you got to support us. you got to support the team. Come on, take one for the team. So and when I, you get laid off, take one for the team. And I, I would, to, to build on what Albert's saying, um, yeah, and, and and that's in the, um, I believe, in the immediate term or short term, that, yeah, you, you engage in that war. And um, if you're an investor, invested in the right assets, you're going to get some returns. But I think the longer game is the U.S. is desperate to control trade routes in Asia, whether it's Western Asia, i.e. Israel, Saudi, or Eastern Asia, China. And this is, this to me, this is all a part of a bigger strategy to control that area, to control the trade, of course, to control energy prices. And um, that's what we're seeing here. I tell my friends, all wars are trade wars. So yes. th there's no reason you, you don't fight anybody unless you you want to unless, unless you want to um change the balance. And yeah. Change, changing the balance on this globe as well. I, I just heard um Tom Tillis, senator from North Carolina, say say something similar. He says, "Yeah, we want we want the Chinese to we want Chinese children to wear um to carry a Captain America shield and to wear Wonder Women uh Wonder Woman costume because." Western, Western civil, they need to, they need to, um, uh, Western civilization values need to be introduced over there. That's what, now for the, for, for, I call him a, well, I'll just say, he's a Neanderthal. You got two types of people supporting war. He, those on the base level who just believe they're supposed to, their Anglo, their Angloness re means that they're supposed to dominate everybody. And then those in the 1% who says, look, I don't care about China, but that's a, that's a nice trade route and that's a big ass market that I need to sell into. So let's have a war. They don't want to play, they don't want to play diplomatic. They don't want to open up or we open it up another way. That's what's going on. Both, right. see, remember the war, remember Saddam, remember the war where they had to go in there to get the weapons of mass destruction and all that. Mm -hmm. And the real issue was, America was allowing Kuwait to drill sideways into, uh, what is Saddam? Is it Iraq? So the Iraq, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They were, they were, they were drilling genetic mm -hmm. sideways into Iraq, stealing oil. And so Saddam said, no, you can't do that. And in fact, uh, I watched, I watched as the minister of defense who, and he wound up getting killed too. Uh, for Iraq called America and said, hey, America, your boys over here in Kuwait, they're doing some wrong stuff, and we, we're going to go shut them down. Do you have a problem with that? America said, no, we don't have a problem with that. You go on and shut them down if you want to. And the minute that Iraq went into there and started that, mm -hmm. America was ready to go shut Iraq down because America wanted to control the flow of oil that was going on in there, and that was a pretext and a pretense mm -hmm. for having to go in there and and tell them you're not going to charge us because see they were getting ready to go up on the barrel price of barrels of oil for America, and America said you're not going to do that. Okay, same thing happened with Gaddafi. Okay, same thing. Gaddafi says 
We're going to stop. We're going to, we're going to control our own destiny by creating our own uh, standard, gold standard to protect our value. America said, no, you're going to stay on the dollar. Mm. You see? And yeah. then the guy goes, no, we're going to go with the gold standard. So he ended up with a missile upside his head too. <laughs> okay. And as they would say, oops, upside the head, and they kept right on going. And now, and now America has caused all of that upheaval over there because now they are able to control the flow of pricing. So it's back to what Alden said. They can control the trade. They can control the flow. Then they're happy, except it doesn't trickle down to the rest mm -hmm. of us. It stays there at the top. They're making more profits now than ever before. And, and yes, and yes, they are. And we can we can even see that in 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 the numbers in terms of the richer getting richer. So the so, question would so be: Does it out. No, go, ahead. Go, go ahead. I was just going to say: no, no. Does it does it even make a difference to worry about who gets elected if all of the top boys are all a part of the same fraternity? Mm -hmm. They just sit in different seats on different sides of the room, and they make sure that that fraternity is taken care of, and everybody else be damned. That's that's the issue we've got now so that we've got to ask ourselves. From an economic standpoint, does it make a difference? From a social, cultural standpoint, does it make a difference? I mean, why why am I going to vote in, on November fifth? Well, that, that's my question. That's my question. When you look at the fact that when yeah. they vote, they vote, they vote right now to say, I'm going to give, uh, 14 billion dollars to Israel in the form of weapons, food, support, armament, and whole nine yards. And I said, mm -hmm. I got on, I got online. I said that wonder what that 14 billion dollars could do in the black community. I and a that. couple of, and a couple of white boys came. They they clapped back with, "Why is he always why Why is he always got to bring up race?" <laughs> you see, why is he got to always bring up race? I brought up fourteen billion helping a community right now who still earns sixty percent on the dollar of white community, and they only have in wealth. Uh, what do I mean they us? We only have five cents of every dollar that they make in terms of wealth, actual wealth, we only earn 5%. So why wouldn't I be interested in that $14 billion stand over here as opposed to going across the sea and helping people like the aircraft company in Marietta, the aircraft company in St. Louis, the Raytheon, and all those other bomb-making people? Why would I be interested in that? So my question is, um, can we, us black folks, can we play? Can we get in this game? And um, is the fact that we are educated much more so than before and we're starting to make inroads, is that for the white guy in power um, sort of a red flag where he says, got to stop that because we play the game this way and they'll never play it this way. Do you know what I'm saying? Can't, should we be making inroads to get in the game, which means vote and vote in people that um, politically can can start moving in a direction that gives us more power, political power? I had I had all the license to sell stocks. I passed my sixty six. I passed my seven. I walked on water at one of the financial houses in terms of making those numbers that they didn't think I was going to make. I was there, could not sell one stock, did not understand one piece of selling the stock, except they were teaching us how to knock on doors, talk to people about buying stocks, and then we would have to come back to these gurus, ask questions, and then go back. I never did learn this game that you're talking about. I was in it. I was educated. Mm -hmm. I was smart enough to, to pass the role. I, I could not sit down and advise you on what stock to buy. I could never do that. Yeah. My wife, same thing. She had a license the same way. She never sold stock. She never sold bonds. That wasn't the game that they were teaching us mm -hmm. in terms of, of understanding. You know, we didn't get that understanding. We got the understanding of follow what we tell you to do. Now, go say this, go say that. When they say this, you say that. 
But a few people, a few people don't just follow what they're teaching. They go beyond that and they start shifting and changing the game. Should we be doing more of that is all I'm saying. Not just following what they teach us because we already know that they're teaching us in ways that keeps us out of the game. How do we learn the game and then start pushing the envelope? And we, we're seeing that athletically. Can we start seeing that politically, educationally, so on and so forth? Can we, can we do you, start? Do you play, does anybody play poker? Did anybody in this room play poker? Okay. Yeah. You got, you got to go get somebody to teach you how to play poker and then you'll understand what the problem is. And what happened with me was they would bring me into the card game. Have me bet all of the time. And every night I'd walk away with no money. And I'd be like, they said, but you coming along pretty good. You really learning. You really into this game. I really like you. Come on back. Yeah, they yeah. liked me until I ran out of money. <laughs> you know, so. I, you know. I get that. I, I get it. I get what you're saying. But I'm saying there are instances and examples of me saying, I learned your rules. I learned your game. Now I'm going to take it a, a step yeah. further. But why, but why are we playing that game? Well, you got to get in it. Why? What are the yeah, games? Like, well, you can't create your own game. You got to get in the game, and then you shift the game to what you want that game to be. Yeah, I um and 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 real quick, I, and I share Albert's experience because I had my series seven, and it's the same thing. You go in there. Here's a script, Alton. And, and then you, you're not understanding what's going on. Once you turn that order in, you don't understand what's going on on the street. That's where the real game is being played. But that's where the real information is being traded. So to get in on the this, using financial markets as, as a um, hey, as an example, I don't. I yeah. The, the the purpose the the purpose should not be to demonstrate to them that we're good at what they do because I could be good at shooting a, a rifle but that doesn't mean that I'm going to bring it around my nieces and nephews the thing is dangerous so I have to understand why am I shooting this rifle in the first place is there some First of all, what are my needs from a system? If my needs can be met creating something else and not having to play their game and meet their standards and meet their rules, knowing that the goalpost is going to move every 10 years, then I'll go create my own stuff. I'll, I'll go in and take some of their components. But I, I mean, just playing, you got, a, you got quite a few of us who played the game, and especially in the financial world. I wouldn't, I wouldn't look up to them or call them leaders or call them anything. Because in the end, if you're in there playing that game, you're playing it for yourself. Mm. That's so the indi- you, individual process right there. Yeah. You, yeah. You're playing it for yourself. Now, if, now, if you said, okay, um, let me see, um, let me start in, uh, Tampa and the banks here, let me open up my own bank. And since I got Rafael Bostic as the president of the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta and Tampa's in that district, let me go see if I can influence him where I can change the laws where each individual black person is their own bank and something like that. Then that looks completely different from from their system, but it's taking care of your needs. Yeah, but you're still playing in their game. Let me let me. You're still playing in their game. And what, mm-hmm. as you get into their game, because you understand the game, you then get in and start shifting and influencing your Warnocks or whoever else, and you start moving the goalposts. That's all I'm saying. You're not on an island somewhere and totally creating a new society. You're Mm -hmm. in this society that has been here for 400 years, that has been run by a certain type of people. Mm -hmm. You've got to get in that game and start making the shifts, but you got to learn it so you can get in it. You can't. I can't today say I'm going to go be a banker. I can't say that because I haven't learned the rules. I don't know. But you, so that's all I'm saying. I, I need you to um, just sort of answer the question and I'm going to go on to something else. Are we better off? And what you are saying, I think, is um, it kind of doesn't matter 
who the president is. The key is how well they're able to communicate and 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 tell the story to make me feel that I'm better off. That is his job. He, his number one weapon is the bully pulpit, the power of persuasion. That is his number one weapon. So, so Biden, it, it, what Biden, does Biden Trump, do? What does Biden do? What does I, he need to do right now with 51 weeks left? What he needs to oh God, I'm, I'm advising Biden, Jesus. Yes, you what are. He, what he, <laughs> what, yeah. What, what Mr. Biden needs to do is one, he needs to demonstrate more energy. It's a, it's an optic thing for him. He's getting slammed because of his age. He's getting slammed because of his speech. Those things he, is some, a lot of stuff he can't control because of his age, but that, that doesn't mean that there's not a way around it. So he has to exude energy, knowing that he's on camera. He's got to have media people who can who can isolate that energy and present it. I don't know how he's going to do it, but that's what he has to do. That's one thing. After he after he he exudes energy, then he has to create a narrative that's different than the one he's bringing now. He needs to. What Biden is good at is being folksy. He needs to sit in front of the American people and say, "Hey, look." I have to be honest with you. I got to be a straight shooter. Like my daddy used to tell me, Joey, blah, 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 blah. Tell that story and say, look, the economy may not be looking good six months from now. But Joe, you promised. I know. I know. But the thing is, I'm telling you, this is what's happening. But this is how I intend to guide us through, just like Moses and the 40 years in the desert. This is how I intend to guide us through this because we got a rough road ahead. But this is how we want to do it. Because if you've got people out there feeling that this economy is not working for them, right. if you've got 60% of people out there saying, I'm being paid paycheck to paycheck, right. and if you're following the Bradley rule, I can't get off of this infrastructure, I can't do my own thing, I'm stuck with you, what are you going to do? And that's what he has to do. And if he has that narrative, and he uses his whole cabinet to push that narrative, which he will be doing after January, you're going to see Pete Buttigieg and Janet Yellen and all of them will be on code talking the same shit. That's okay. what he has to do. Or, okay. else he, or else he will lose next November. The best okay. president, the best president ever that y'all will ever remember was Ronald Reagan. And let me tell you why. He had dementia yeah, for you three got, years. You got three seconds to tell us why. He had dementia for three years and ran this country and made everybody happy. He was oh, deaf, yeah. blind, and crazy <laughs> and ran this country. <laughs> so I know he understood All right. what was going on. And All I'm right. just telling you, yeah. that's, that, but, I, but that's a good example of what we've been talking about. In terms okay. of what the president is going to have to do, yeah. this boy right here couldn't even spell his name half the time, you know? So so you just keep on waiting on old, old Joe, you know, to do something. And, and I'm going to wait on old Joe you. to do something, but I agree that after January, we're going to see sort of this blitzkrieg happening mm -hmm. around Joe. So um, um, Mona's already said, hey, move on. So I'm moving on. Uh, the past election cycle, Republicans suffered big losses in red states. What happened? And according to Kamala, she said, we got the wind at our backs. Do we? Alton. Because of the election? Well. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'm, I'm going to have to move from you. Do we have the wind at our backs, Albert? I'm sorry. Mm. Albert, do we have the wind at our backs? And I mean, I Albert. The Democrats. Here, here's my here's my yeah. thing. Even a blind squirrel finds a nut every now and then, and I think that some of those elected people were lucky. It will not be the big landslide. See, they sent it. They sent it out here to be hype city and try to get everybody. Once again, if you say it long enough and you say it over and over enough. Not only will you believe the lie, but then you have other people believe in the lie also that we right, got this minute, great big chance. Wait a minute, but the narrative is important and repeating it over and over is important. Well, if the narrative if is we true. We all believe the lie. We go to the polls and we pull that lever for yeah. the lie. So maybe the lie is critical here. How, how critical? What good is a lie if you still come out in the same place? That's all I'm saying. If 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 one is going if one is going to give you strychnine and the other one is going to give you uh rat poison, what's the difference? 
Okay, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I'm saying, I'm saying, if I tell you a lie just to get elected, and once I get elected, I start doing the same things that they're doing, and that's what's happening right now. We're more warmongering. We're hiding prices. We're making up stuff so that people try to feel good while people are getting laid off. Go into some of these stores right now where they used to have 10 employees and they're now using four to do the work of 10 and putting the computers and saying, well, we're automating now. That's the only way we'll talk to you now. We won't, we won't even take your order. You got to go and do that. Because it is 2023. It is not 1988. So yes, they are automating. And yes, the whole skill bank is changing and, and, and there are less employees and there's AI that people are using to write right. entire speeches and programs and right. songs and yeah. things are happening. <laughs> all of this is happening. So if we can say this is the world that we live in today, right? And we, we, we don't, we don't get stuck with well, things are changing and, and, and yes, of course they are changing, but given the changes that we're dealing with, who's the better president to put in place with our agenda, with what we want to accomplish? Cornel West. Given Cornel the fact West. That- Cornel West. But that's the guy. Come that's on, the, come on, you got to help me out here. Well, I'm going to see. Okay. So, so, okay. I, I didn't realize that there was already an answer to the question. No. And that you didn't really want me to give you an answer. You wanted okay, me to. Stop, stop. To, why don't you take your hand and stick it up my back and move my lips and I'll say. Why don't I do it? <laughs> no. If you want the best, this. if you, if you want the best president, I say it. Now, if you just want who, who is going to win? See, that, and that, that's the argument and that's the conversation that I don't think we've had enough of. Is it the, uh, is it the goal to win or is it the goal to get somebody good? That, 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 that's what the question is. And if all they're going to do is be the hype man anyway, as Alton has already adequately laid out very clear, what difference does it make who the hype man is as long as we're able to negotiate for what we want? as a group because when i want to negotiate i want somebody who i feel like i can make inroads with i'm not going for a maga king for something for black folks because it's already evident that they have a lock on that particular person uh i'm sorry i I need to get mona Mona. (laughs) so um I think we're at the point where we need someone who can win and we need someone that would not harm the black um, community as a whole. And, and we, and we do believe if Trump get in there and he's in control, but I say if Trump get in and maybe we take over the, um, the Senate and the, and the House, we'll be okay. But we got to go with Biden. And he's not good. Nobody wants him. I had three young people here today. And I was amazed at how these, and these, these kids, they were 24 years old. And they were quite familiar with what's going on. And the first thing they said, oh, we're not voting for Biden because of the war. And I'm like, yes. I understand you not like what's going on in Israel, but we cannot. And they were shocked to hear me say that we cannot vote for Trump. We just can't at this point. And we, and what I'm seeing, how they're pushing everything, every all the laws and the rules are being changed. And and unfortunately, if Trump get in, we'll be pushed back almost 20, 30 years. Not for us, but for our children and their children. So, I, I, think, I, think, I will bet every, I will bet Sorry, anybody Jeanette. at this table, I will bet everybody at this table a hundred dollars to your one dollar that Trump is not going to win. And all that fear mongering of voting for somebody else because Trump yeah. might win, that is a distraction from what we need to be thinking of as black folk. Yeah. The question is not where, how do we address our fears, but how do we address our wants and our desires and our needs? Yes, yes. 
You, yeah, you guys that's are, all I'm saying. Yeah, I, I mean, I like what you're saying. These I guys, don't, I don't need to worry about the fear. I already know the fear. I, I've seen him in action, and he didn't scare me. He yeah, did not he, scare me at all. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. People made it sound as if this guy was writing the 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 the, the second version of the Anne Frank's diary or something. Yeah. I'm still I'm still here waiting to. Yo, dude, like, did Trump go up into your attic and drag your ass out? Where is he? That's, that's what I'm talking about. This fear. Whoever's in office, you got to negotiate with. It's not about MAGA. And it's not even about black. You go in there, I got an offer you can't refuse. You got to find out what his weaknesses are, what his negotiating points are. You got to find all that stuff and say, this is the value we bring in exchange for some value you got for us. That's it. You can't be, black people cannot go in there and say, oh, well, I don't like him. That's like saying, oh, well, yeah, I feel like a Big Mac today, but I don't like the particular manager they got in there. Did she put your Big Mac on your tray? Yes. Was Talk it hot? Talk Talk was it them. prepared? Good. Because you don't have to see her again for the next 23 hours. Governance that's pushing all the, um, and all the laws and reversing. What about all the governors? I didn't hear that part. I'm sorry. Uh, you are breaking up, Mona, so we're really struggling to hear what you're saying. You are breaking up. Okay. Okay, move on. No, no, go No, now. no, go now. I was saying, what about all these governors that's, that's um, changing the laws and doing everything that, that you know, mm -hmm. that black people aren't liking? Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and to... Yeah, and, I like that because one, just national elections alone can be a distraction. I mean, take Georgia. Georgia's full of resources. What's the population there of black people? Maybe about 25%, maybe 30%. Yep. As a block of people, hey, uh, we got a lot of agricultural land here, but we only own 3% of it. But we're some hardworking people. Let's make a deal. Okay. Now, a lot of people don't like Brian Kemp. But can you negotiate with him? You can negotiate with Brian Kemp. I don't think yeah. you can negotiate with um, the Trump. Trump Every, everybody's they, negotiating. I got that. I got that. But um, no, you don't. Even, when, even even when Trump tried to leave, break up with, uh, I don't know, with with the um, the MAGA base, they kind of slapped him around when he t when he said take the vaccine, mm. and they looked at him like. You need to be carrying our water, not not the other way around. And there's a lesson to be learned from that. Say it again, that, Alton. That's what I'm talking about. That's there's a lesson right there. Then it's a oh Ma look what Marga pulled off. Hey, let me take some notes. Okay, Mr. President, you're the president. We're the constituency. We don't look like you. We're not from Queens. Blah blah blah. But this is what we want, and this is what you can give up. Give it up. That's it. You're I mean, about, you're talking about black people. Black people. We, we, I, I mean, going back to Albert's point, I don't care if you got MAGA backing him up. I don't care if he's got the boardwalk or jersey backing him up. I don't care. Do you have something I want or need? And do I have something you want or need? Let's right. negotiate. Let's trade. Mona, do black, can black people negotiate on that level with the Trump or a Biden for that matter? But can we negotiate on that level where we have something that he wants? And can and 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 uh, can start wagging the dog the way other folks do, and getting what we want. Do we have that capacity? We can. We have to pick our leaders ourselves. Who's going to do the go in there and do the negotiation? Because nine out of ten, they're going to sell us out. Yeah, it can't be this crop of leaders. That's for sure. I agree, Miss Judge. <laughs> these these guys, no, they suck. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm talking about an election in 51 weeks, right? And I'm talking that we have this um, top runner, um, Biden and um, and Trump, and then these other folks, these other yahoos. Um, what 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 should black people be doing? What should we be doing? That that's that's what we're trying to answer. Is all right. Um, is the wind at our back? Do Democrats, Blacks, come together behind one candidate and start pushing 
and uh, negotiating, if you will, mm. or, or or something. We, we the, there has to be something. We can't just be talking theoretically. What is it that we can be doing? Here's here's some facts for you. First of all, when the vice president said we have the win at our back, the question should have immediately come, who are you talking about? And she was talking about the Democrats at right. that upper level. They think they have the upper hand to overturn the upper level of the Republicans. The second thing, black folks have got to get out of the habit of calling themselves Democrats or Republicans for that matter, and they got to start looking at the interests of black folks. Now that's that some will call that theory. I say it is it is if MAGA could take a handful of votes, all you gotta do is have a swing vote. Right. See you look in terms of swing voting and you start saying, I'm here to sell my swing vote. You gotta get my buddy uh out of Memphis on, on here. We got we gotta interview him so he can talk to you about buying politicians. You know, we never got him on here, and he would be a great because he was in politics over in Memphis. He's still yeah, in I, politics. I spoke with him. So, you know, yeah. and he's a wheel of dealer over there, and he says money talks, and everything else walks. And so yeah. we have got to be ready as the black folks to stop trying to be a Democrat, be a Republican, but be black folk willing to sell to the highest bidder. You guys ought to um, kind of listen to Claude Anderson again with his five or six step plan or something. But um, buying politicians is not number one, nor is it number two. It's not even number three. It's probably number four by the time you have figured out a whole lot of other stuff before you can buy a politician. Well, how is it that how is it that the APAC can buy politicians? How is it that? The gun control lobby can buy politicians. How is it that they can do that? Because you ain't got no money. Huh? You ain't got no money. All the billions of dollars we earn every year, we ain't got no money? Yeah, black people like to say, oh, yeah, we got spending power, and and you know what? We're not spending it on anything. So so we ain't got no spending power. We got no voting power. So what's the (laughs) answer then, Jeanette? Where do we go? Tell me. Tell me what we do then. Well, that's what we're here to try to figure out. But you, mm-hmm. you're talking buying politicians, and we don't put our money where it really um, invests in our future. I think. Well, and an, I, don't think that I don't think we're ready to do it. Well, then another an, another option is um, we spend the next four or five years going building somewhat on Mona's point, cultivating a new leadership. Because if 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 I'm going to take if I'm going to look at new territory and the people there occupying it don't want to negotiate with me, then I need to take it. But you're not going to be able to take it unless you've got, unless you've got leadership that galvanizes you to go in there and do it. And right now, I, right now, today, we don't, blacks don't have that leadership, but it's not, I don't, I, I, I don't want to give up and say it's impossible, but that's the other route that has to be taken. In other words, we may be spending too much time for going back to Albert's point. Democrat or Republican, who's going to represent us? We're representing ourselves, you know. And and that way, when you, I think when you take that approach, then you l- mitigate the risk of following somebody who's going to sell you out down the road. So. Elton, I ha- I have another theory too. So this could be our last time and i and i think i looked it up i just can't remember if it was done but we could have a democratic president mm-hmm. control the house and the senate it has happened twice that i found and to see and let the if we give this to biden this time because you remember claiborne said hey all we had to do was give it to him and this is what was going to happen now let's cuz now we understand well, he have to have the House, and he have to have the Senate, and he have to have the super majority. Let's try to do that this time, and give him four years. The last four years, not just him, the Democratic Party as a whole. And if we don't get the four main things we want, then it is it is not about them having control. It is about them still keeping us where we're at, and then we could go out 
and say, hey, I'm giving my, um, we're giving our, our, our votes to whoever is willing to sign a contract. It could be a Republican. I don't, that's what made me really go from the Democratic Party because we had it under Barack and he didn't do anything. We had it under Clinton. Right. So and you bring you bring up the point. Yeah. Barack, if if it was ever going to be a time when we right. had control to do whatever we wanted, was up under Barack. Those when first he, years, and he yeah, controlled yeah, yeah. the Congress, he controlled the Senate, he was the administrator in charge. And what happened? It, he what went happened, Democrat. He went happened, Democrat. What happened is what happened to a lot of black leaders in corporations and companies. They just do what they tell them to do. And if they don't, they get cut off at the knees. And that's what I think. I, I, I Corporate America, black people did not rise in that organization. And um, and I understood exactly why. why? I, I got it. Is that why? Uh, Scott, I, you, you, had had to, you had to almost become them. You had to be so um, assimilated into... Um, that culture, and if you were not willing to do that, you don't get to play. You just don't get to play. Well, I know. I'm understanding that. Understanding I decided that. I wasn't going to play. Understanding that, that means right. so that Barack most people don't played. know the game. You know, he Barack he won. He, he went from a nobody to a person able to buy an $8 million house on Kenny Buckport. Okay, right. that's, who he, that's who he did. He's able to charge Three, four, five, six hundred thousand dollars right now for speaking engagement for an hour or two. Okay. He went. He he got all of the personal accoutrements that comes so, when, as you hey, say, they decide to play the game. And yet you told us earlier, let's learn how to play the game. We see what the game is. No, 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 the no, no, question no. is, do it, you really want to play that game? I mm-hmm. did say learn how to play the game, get in the game, and then you start make you start shifting. You start making decisions about how you're going to change or improve the game. You can get in and play the game, and then you get too comfortable. That's what I see a lot of black folks do. And no, just, oh, I got to, I got to, I got to move us on. Nobody's willing to give, nobody's willing to give that up. You, you look at Tim Scott. Right, you get too comfortable. Yes, for him well, to get up and say the stuff that he says, and he man. is an African American man. It is it is just crazy. Black but, men, black folk voted ninety something percent in the last election for Democrats. Ninety mm-hmm. something percent. You, you that you know that's almost unheard of. 90, 90 plus. Now, I think it was ninety five. I can't even remember exactly, but ninety five, ninety six percent. That's a huge number of votes. Yes, that went for somebody that we lost on. We mm-hmm. lost as black folk on. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, okay? and we don't get what we always is. I, I got to move us on. You mentioned Tim Scott. Tim Scott just um, real fast, kind, kind of rapid fire. Tim Scott just suspended his campaign. Anybody crying over that? What? Who was Tim Scott? Who's Tim Scott? <laughs> <laughs> I told you, you um, can't have all Scott. these no name folks. And, and you know what? He mad because they 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 call they call him gay. That's why. That's why. That's why. Because he is. No, uh, no. See no, what I'm saying? See but, what I'm but saying? You, you, you know, but white, you know why they you know why they call him gay? White woman he, girlfriend that he displayed. At, yes, he did, know, didn't he? At the, uh, uh, at the debate, the I was like, wait a minute, what's this? <laughs> see, this is part it's of like, the game. Are you having premarital sex? Tell me what's going on here. So now, yeah. I'm telling Step- you, I'm telling you, the only reason they call him gay is because he ain't married. That's okay? right. Because he- more, because you got a whole bunch of them folks, especially with his partner from North Carolina or uh, South Carolina, <laughs> yeah, supposed to be yeah. full fledged gay, and he just married. They ain't gonna say nothing about it. Lindsay just got married. No, uh, what's his no, name? Uh, um, what's well, look at Lindsey Graham. Yeah, Lindsey Graham. That's, Lindsay Graham. That's who I'm talking about. That's who yeah. I'm talking about. What about but, Graham? But, he got but, married. No. No, oh, he's a girl. He but listen, whoever his campaign manager was when I was reading this stuff, because the Republican Party, because he's moving further to the um, right, is faith, religion, and family. That should have been the first thing they said. You got to get that in order. But this man said he was 57 years old and he's a virgin. I, I, 
This is what he's. I don't. I don't this know. is what he's saying. Yeah, but I don't know if he's still claiming he's a virgin. He did early on in um, when he was 30, 30 some years old, and that was kind of like crazy. But now he's yeah. debating the question. He's not really he answering. Be more, he wants to be more religious <laughs> than they are. Yeah, he saw he, he was that 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 performance at the debate, all that religiosity. I'm like, dude, it's please. the craziest thing. But, but he's exactly what sick. we're talking about. You mentioned it earlier. He's exactly what we're talking about when them them color boys get in there and 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 they assimilate so much so that you don't even recognize them. He doesn't even register as a black man, in my opinion, when he's out there talking. No. It, it's I crazy. can't. I don't know if I go that far, but I understand where you're coming no, from. He, I would he, go he's, that he's, far. he's 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 out. He's definitely outside the the um. The, the, I don't see him giving the that. Why I say that? <laughs> the reason why I say that because um, for for African Americans in particular, when when black people do stupid stuff out there, we kind of take that personally because it's representing the race. And and we we don't like that. We take pride in when they do great, and when they don't, man, it's like homeboy just just messed up, and we take it personally. When Tim Scott messes up, Who? we, we <laughs> laugh at him. It's as no. if he 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 doesn't belong to the yeah. the group anymore as a group. So we don't really I don't he doesn't know, but he, register he, he, with, he, with he our he caucuses with the rest of them bougies, so yeah. Yeah, that's true. So I'm going to move on to the last uh, thing because we are over time. Update on Deion Sanders' effect uh, with his recent loss, 34-31. Do you still believe? I think he's never did. Yeah, I think I'm, he's, I'm a he's a good coach. He's a good coach. I don't know much about it, but I've been doing research, and yes, I still believe because the scores are still really good. If you look at the scores um, last year, they weren't getting, and I know a win is a win, but they were getting slaughtered. So he's just right there. He got to critique a little things. But, yeah, I still believe. I it's think he ought to get rid of the y'all. defensive coordinator because the white boys won't hurt him. Okay, that's my opinion. <laughs> yeah, it's his first year, too, right? Mm-hmm. Defensive coordinator messed him up. If you, if you keep that score low, then they win because his son is number three in the country. In terms of uh, offense, so yeah. the problem is you got yeah, the other well, team scoring exactly. more. You know they they scoring more, but that yeah, I still believe him, my boy. He's he's still cool in my book. Okay, so Elton, <laughs> Elton, he's a he's a Seminole and an ex Cowboy, so he'll always be cool in my book. Right. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't, I don't care beyond that. I mean. If he was sitting at home being an accountant, I'd say, Dion, you thank you very much for them, for for my I wins, and that's it. I don't care. I mean, okay, he's got he he's got a system. He's got a system, and um, somebody else is gonna do well with that system next year, and they're gonna get the praise. But then Dion, he's a good coach. He may bring the Buffalo back. I quite frankly, I'm not trying to be facetious. I, I haven't given a damn about Colorado since 1990 when they were co-champions. I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't care. So, yeah. so he is losing. Well, he did lose a, a pretty good recruit. Um, that that walked. That pretty much said, you know, I decommit or uncommit or whatever the word is. They no, lost, have, hey, Saban in Alabama lost one of one big crew recruits too, and he accused Dion of paying this guy to get it. So yeah, all all the schools wind up still hawking these guys. I don't I don't see that as a big deal either, unless unless you're gonna go back and jump Saban by losing his big recruit. Nobody said your your program is gonna suffer. Yeah, but mm. but my boy is in the spotlight. Um, some are also saying, hey. He needs to stop being all showy and, you know, they need to calm it down and blah, blah, blah. And that's what they get. Uh, so I, I, the I can't. Coming out. The haters are coming out for Dion. I don't know the man, but having, well, I wouldn't have followed him for 41 years. Being in my awareness, I'm not going to tell a grown ass 50 something year old man to be something else. <laughs> then he ain't. Be, you know, be who you are. I mean, right. that's what makes him special. He, 
he as an artist, he was who he was on the football field. Right. He's going to be who he is as a coach. And the haters to hell with them. You know, mm-hmm. so next year when he wins, he goes 11 and 0, you know, and gets beaten by this nose in the championship. Then they're going to make us a lot of noise. <laughs> but right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> Dion. All right, all right, all right. Hey, that that's that's it for tonight, you guys. Um, nice job. Um, sounds like Biden needs to uh, get better at telling his story. To yes, that's every president's problem. That is the number one issue. 